All right, the substitution and income effects. Now this topic troubled me a lot in school. It was intuitively difficult to grasp. I'm just hoping that this video helps and you don't have to go through the same phase. I've conjured up an example to hopefully give you some intuition. So in our world, we have coconuts that are priced at $4 each and we also have oranges that are priced at $2 each. Sam's mom gives him $30 and using those $30, Sam purchases five coconuts and five oranges. So this is Sam's original demand bundle, 5-5. Five, five. So you have five coconuts priced at $4 each. That's five into four and five oranges priced at $2 each. That's five into two. So the total is $13. Basically, Sam is using every dollar that his mom had given him. So this is, again, this is Sam's original demand button. Now, the next day, let's say the price of coconuts decreases from $4 to $2. And Sam's mom notices that. And she's like, you know what, Sam? Yesterday, you bought five coconuts and five oranges. Now, the price of coconuts has reduced. So now I'm just going to give you enough money, just enough money, so that you can afford your original bundle. So Sam's mom sits and does some math. She's like, yesterday I purchased five coconuts. Now they're priced at $2 each. And the price of oranges remains the same. That's 5 into 2 again. So that's 5 into 2 into 2. That's $20. So now Sam's mom will only give him $20. And using that money, Sam can purchase five coconuts and five oranges. So now after the price change, maybe Sam doesn't want to buy five coconuts anymore. Maybe he wants to buy more coconuts in place of oranges. So Sam is like, um, let us assume Sam now wants to buy eight coconuts and two oranges, completely based on his preferences. And that is exactly the idea behind the substitution effect. Notice how the demand for coconuts is changing. So the substitution effect gives you the measure of how a person substitutes one good for the other when there's a price change in our world but purchasing power remains the same the idea behind purchasing power remains the same is that now sam has 20 dollars which is just enough money so that he can just afford his original bundle but now he doesn't do that he has a different demand so now sam purchases his bundle and he returns home and sam's mom is like sam i was just kidding you can have your 10 dollars back I gave you $20, Sam has made his purchase, now he has his extra $10 back. So he can obviously buy more coconuts and oranges using that extra dollar and that is the idea behind the income effect. Because notice when the price of coconuts reduces, Sam in some sense is actually getting richer because he can afford more oranges and coconuts, right? And so using those extra $10, whatever will be his change in demand for coconuts, that is the measure of the income effect. Hopefully that gives you some intuition. Now let's take a look at a graph and that should clear stuff up further. Okay, this is our original budget line. X is our original demand bundle. The equation is given by P1X1 plus P2X2 is equal to M. You have obviously done this in the past. The slope is given by minus P1 by P2. The Y intercept is M by P2. And similarly, the X intercept is M by P1. Now, Let's say the price of good one reduces from P1 to P1 dash. Let's try to model that down in terms of substitution and income effects. So remember what was the first thing we did with Sam? We reduced his income so his original bundle was just affordable. So we can find out how he's substituting between good one and good two. So that's exactly what we're going to do in this case. And you'll notice how our intercept is changing because our income changes from m to m dash and i'll show you how to do that calculation in the next slide but first let's just take a look at this pivoted budget line why is it pivoting because well the slope of the budget line is given by p1 by p2 right and now since our p1 is changing so that means our slope is decreasing right and since our slope is decreasing it's getting flatter so now the demand changes from x to y and that is exactly the magnitude of the substitution effect. It calculates the change in demand when there's a price change for that particular good. Now, remember what we did for the income effect. We gave that person his original income back. So now again, the income will change from M dash to M. And thus, we have a final budget line where the demand is at Z. And this is 
the magnitude of the income effect. Now you will notice that this red curve is parallel to the green curve. Why is it parallel? Because now our price remains the same, right? It's at P1 dash. It's just that in this case, our M is changing. So our, our intercepts are changing, but our slope remains the same. That's why there is a parallel shift. So Z is our final demand bundle, and this is how you break it your total change in demand down between substitution and income effects. Just to reiterate, we started off with our white budget line. X was our original demand model. Then we took some money away after the price change so that our original bundle was just affordable. And that's the reason why our pivoted budget line is passing through our original bundle. So whenever you're drawing these graphs, make sure that that happens. And then we are giving that money back to this person so that the income again changes from M dash to M. And then there's a parallel shift and we have a final budget line and Z being a final demand. Now, how do you calculate the change in income? Well, equation two is our original budget line, the price of P1, P2, and our original demand model is X1, X2. Now, when the price changes, you want to be able to afford the same bundle, which is again, X1, X2 as shown in equation one, but different prices. So P1 changes, so it's P1 dash into X1 plus P2 X2. So let's say you need M dash amount of money to afford the same bundle at new prices, and then you can calculate the change in income required by doing M dash minus M is equal, which gives you X1 into P1 dash minus P1. Now do notice that this change in income can be negative or positive, so you can make the change in intercepts accordingly. Now let's take a look at these effects formally. The substitution effect is defined as the change in demand for good one when price changes from p1 to p1 dash and the income changes from m to m dash m dash being the adjusted income so that the original bundle is affordable at the new price the substitution effect is denoted by delta xs and you can calculate that by evaluating the demand for good one at the original price and the original income and subtracting that for from the demand for good one at the new price and the adjusted income m dash Similarly, let's take a look at the income effect as well. Defined as the change in demand for good one when the income is changed back from M dash to M is denoted by delta XN. And you can calculate that by evaluating the demand at the new price P1 dash and the adjusted income M dash and subtracting that from the demand evaluated at, again, the new price, but um, the original income. Okay, I hope you got around this. Um, in the future videos, I'll be really talking about and working through examples on how to calculate the substitution effect and the income effect separately. And I'll see you in the next one.